I am the victim of a broken system, frozen in time, perpetuated by greed and the status quo. Growing up, I didn't want to be a writer, a historian, a scientist, nor a mathematician. However, these are really the only paths offered me by a K-12 education system that still dominates the norm today. Opportunities to explore my true passions were virtually non-existent. Things, however, are beginning to change. There has definitely been a change in the last 28 years, and being a student at Okoboji Middle School this past year has provided me with many opportunities, such as Midmaster, Explore Lab, and I even had the amazing opportunity to be involved in this program called No Boundaries. And you'll hear more about this program a little bit later. Yet more changes are still desperately needed. Many of these school systems shade these opportunities and deny kids the education that will help them grow and find their true passions and interests. Instead of getting out into the real world, we sit in classrooms and learn skills and concepts without the needed context on how to apply them in life. Prior to the 1920s, education was much rote memorization. Things like the horn book, chalk and chalkboards, and finally, lead pencils and paper were the educational technologies of the time. Throughout the 1920s, more vocational programs were set up in public schools. The educational technologies of the time were first silent film and then film with sound and radio. In the 1940s, World War II exposed many issues with the American education system. The Army rejected many recruits because they simply couldn't read or write. College became big business with government contracts and the signing of the GI Bill. The overhead projector saw its first use in classrooms. And typewriters were actually studied for use in schools. In the 60s, students were being prepared for factory style work. They were taught how to follow workflows and to not think for themselves. Television was also becoming very popular for use by schools, and teaching machines were introduced. In the late 70s and 80s, computers saw their slow introduction into education. Computer-assisted instruction was their main purpose for decades. If not used for CAI, they were used to help teach students the use of computers in hopes they would gather a skill set useful in obtaining a job. They were very rarely used to create anything. But they were definitely doubters. What if they were thinking about educational technology all wrong? In elementary school, I had the rare opportunity to be part of a program called Talented and Gifted, where I was able to explore the use of computers and teach myself how to code on a Bell and Howell Apple II. Pretty cool, right? However, opportunities to explore this passion further were extremely limited. There was exactly one programming course in high school, and it taught the same things I had taught myself in elementary school. I was so extremely bored in school. Nothing they were delivering me was remotely interesting. I remember one specific instance in high school when my math teacher asked if I wanted to go self-paced. I said, heck yeah, better than what we're doing now. He went to the administration and I never heard anything else about it. I'm assuming he was told no. In normal class today, we have different and creative ways to learn that keep us mostly interested. We can learn on paper or on the computer, and most teachers like to include small activities in an attempt to keep our brains present. But most of the things they teach us are not useful for most students' future careers. During mid students have the opportunity to choose classes that they are interested in. These classes are different from normal class and help us gain a little bit more real-world knowledge. Many students also prefer mid over normal class. Some examples of these classes include Cardboard Challenge, where we have to create carnival games using science, technology, engineering, and math with cardboard. And Can You Escape guides students in the creation of their own escape room with a small group. 
And finally, No Boundaries. No Boundaries is a passion-based student-led program where students have the opportunity to work with local businesses to complete a small job or task for them. This year for No Boundaries, my group was tasked with creating a small element for the new middle school's lobby. We had many struggles in the beginning of the project, but we ended up getting it done using real-world skills like talking to adults and figuring out our complex problems using our collaboration and complex communication skills. In addition to the very exciting opportunities being offered Addison, there are some others. Iowa Big exists to assist students in developing their agency, efficacy, and passions while gaining valuable real-world and academic skills so they can succeed in a world of rapid and constant change. Iowa Big feels no boundaries. Through a collaboration of education, business, and the community, Waukee Apex develops highly skilled, adaptable, global innovators and leaders. High Tech Highs are culturally diverse communities that empower their students to further develop their interests through active learning experiences. COVID-19 forced change in education. Millions of school children around the world were suddenly learning differently. From their bedrooms and dining room tables, they were engaged in virtual learning opportunities provided to them by dedicated educators. These educators were forced, in many cases, to choose the most critical skills to focus on for the remainder of the year and deliver them in new and innovative ways. Many of these teachers were not formally assessing the task completed by their students, but instead giving feedback on how to improve. We suggest we make COVID from COVID. <laughs> we need to seize this as an opportunity to promote the change we feel is desperately needed. Change has started, but imagine grouping based on ability, not age. Why do we insist on keeping a student that can read at a sixth grade reading level in a third grade reading group or vice versa? Imagine every student with an IEP. Why shouldn't every student get the help they need when they need it and be allowed to move on when they show competency? Imagine a school day without set schedules. Why shouldn't students and staff be allowed to set meetings for content when the students need it for what they're working on? Imagine students meeting standards while completing real world passion projects, all the while getting direct instruction when needed at the level they need it. Why should learning be any different? Technology's true superpower is managing all of this innovative learning. Technology's power to change education is not in changing how instruction is delivered to a classroom full of students, but rather in its power to help teachers teach every student what they need to know when they need to know it. Technology is good at data. Teaching and learning this way will produce a lot of it. Technology can make all of this data relevant and usable by all involved. Knowing where every student is in their learning journey is critical to making such a system work. Technology can help track every student and help guide the assistance they need to weave their way through every standard, regardless, regardless of the task used to learn them. Managing partner project submissions is critical so every student is engaged at the appropriate level, learning standards through engaging in project-based learning opportunities that ingrain these opportunities into a skill set that is usable well beyond high school. You've heard it a thousand times a thousand ways. Learn to code, change the world. We say, change, change education, education, change the world. world.